Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So we will now embark upon the concluding uh, sessions, two sessions, uh, session 5 and 6 of this uh, second week of our course on uh, marketing management part 1. Uh, as you have realized that in this week, we are looking at both internal environment and external environment of a business to frame a good marketing strategy. So, you have seen that how we, we, we talked a little bit about uh, the competitor analysis, uh, the external environment. Subsequently, we talked about the internal environment and uh, strength, weakness, opportunity and threat. We also discussed about the uh, political, economic, social, uh, technical uh, uh, analysis uh, that are necessary to frame a good marketing strategy. Uh, today, uh, in the concluding two sessions, uh, we would like to uh, go deeper and wider uh, in this important uh, arena of uh, competitive strategy formulation and competitive strategy deployment. So, competitive analysis uh, is an analysis of the competitors with respect to your uh, current position. Now, obviously, competitors can be direct competitors and or can be uh, indirect competitors. Indirect competition is, is a, a particular uh, phenomenon which uh, vastly uh, uh, has permeated almost all businesses. For example, uh, if you go back 10 years, then people who were competing in the music industry were quite distinct from the people who were competing in the phone industry. But today, if you take any mobile phone service uh, company, whether they are only doing uh, telephony as we understood earlier, which is basically a voice application or they are in the business of digital content delivery, which includes music and various other forms. Uh, is a question very difficult to answer. So, perhaps uh, in uh, years to come, we will see that uh, the uh, traditional uh, distribution channel of music industry in the form of uh, CDs, DVDs, cassettes, etcetera, will all merge into uh, on, on this platform uh, of uh, mobile telephony uh, or the mobile internet as we also often call it. So, with the 4G and other advanced uh, systems coming in for uh, mobile content delivery, music, the predominant way of delivering music will be now uh, that mobile telephony platform. As a result, uh, what is uh, competition uh, in the music industry and what is competition will be uh, in the telephony industry will be indistinguishable. And this is uh, the nature of uh, direct indirect competition or local and crossover competition. So, as you see today, who is your competitor and who is your supplier and who is your collaborator, these questions are often very uh, difficult and very complex to answer. Uh, in many industries, uh, you will be uh, working with uh, companies who will be your competitor in one field and will, will become your collaborator or supplier in another field. For example, we know that Samsung and Apple for mobile phones uh, with Android phone and iOS phones, they are fiercely competing with each other. But in many other areas, Samsung is a, a prized supplier, is a, is a coveted supplier of uh, uh, iPhone and other uh, phone manufacturing companies because they are very strong in semiconductors and components. And similarly, in display systems and others, these uh, 
these this these uh, mergings uh, happen and therefore it is quite difficult these days uh, to understand uh, the nature of your competition until and unless you use something like this uh, diagram and you you meticulously plot all the different uh, people who are directly head on competing with you or indirectly competing in some form or the other or might actually cross over from their current position to come directly into your almost direct competition line. So, people are all the time transiting from here to there or from here to there. So, this is the graph a uh, view graph that will be quite useful often to map out your entire competitive what we call competitive landscape. So, you fill up all these blocks and know your competition where who is situated. So, to identify uh, competitors uh, you have to analyze them in terms of their product features and quality with respect to your product features and quality. Similarly, their uh, customer relationship uh, strategies, their uh, customer retention strategies and as you see uh, maybe 5 years back this discussion on CRM strategies would have come somewhere here, but we have now brought it up right next to the product or service feature and quality because this is the primary mode of competition today as we have discussed earlier. Then you have to also study uh, R and D strategies of your competition and what kind of marketing mix. This is a tactical side of uh, the strategy that what is there uh, your competitors price, promotion, distribution, supply chain management uh, strategies. All these data uh, collection uh, uh, it must happen continuously. So, usually today in any uh, large organization or in some cases even for startups you have to deal with a massive amount of uh, data collected on all these heads for all the competitors. The competitors uh, are not only direct competitors earlier it would have been an enough to do a competitive analysis here, but today we have to do this for the whole uh, uh, map and we have to take data collect data for all of these heads. So, data analysis uh, marketing information system has become a very uh, uh, complex exciting uh, and very important arena which we will take up next week uh, in more detail. So, once uh, have all this data about uh, customer and we will discuss next week some of the techniques of the analyzing the data, but once you have the outcome of your analysis then basically uh, competitive analysis uh, will have to be merged with uh, customer analysis. So, understand customer needs and wants identify current and potential competitors. So, which means customer needs is a fountain head that is where marketing starts. Uh, because all marketing as we have discussed is an approach towards the need fulfillment, whether an articulated need or a latent or unarticulated need. And what we are saying is that you have on one hand the customer need analysis, on the other hand you have to see which competitor is meeting uh, those sets of needs in which different way and you have to therefore, create a whole matrix of these are the needs and competition A this is how they are meeting the needs, competition B this is how they are meeting the needs and then uh, you have to do your position analysis. We will discuss uh, that uh, uh, in uh, with, with some example uh, very soon and also of course, this whole segment about positioning we will discuss in much more detail when we discuss. Uh, segmentation, targeting, positioning, differentiation, etcetera. So, now uh, as you can see here on this graph, uh, understand customer needs and wants, identify current and potential competitors, do that together. So, industry analysis, uh, which we have already discussed, uh, you have to also now merge that with uh, supplier analysis, and finally, you have to understand the competitors in terms of the customer needs 
and then you have to determine the uh, co competitor strategies uh, present and future. And uh, so, it is not written here, but we should add here, then you have to do the competitive SWOT analysis of you versus your competitor A, B, C, D and so on. Uh, we will take up as I said an actual example and show how this is done. Um, to conclude theory or conceptual aspect of it that uh, competitors uh, we have to um, understand current competitors, we have to understand potential uh, competitors and potential competition uh, the at that stage one very important is to look at barriers to entry. Sometimes when you launch a new product or you are uh, strengthening a new product, then not only you look at the features etcetera, you will also look at the uh, barriers, different types of barriers. And as when we discuss this uh, PEST concept or we discuss the SWOT concept, then you would have uh, understood that there are not only direct price barrier or uh, uh, barriers with respect to distribution chain. There are various other types of barriers that can be created like for example, uh, using your relationship. Uh, you can make it very difficult or very inconvenient for the customer to switch. So, creation of barrier is also now not a reactive strategy, uh, uh, but more a proactive strategy. So, often these days uh, one actually maps out that okay, these are the people who might come into my field and what kind of barrier can I build so that they will have less incentive to come into my market. Uh, sometimes uh, you may actually uh, go forward and compete uh, and, and nip in the bud a potential uh, competitor, because you can offer so much competitive heat to them, they will be busy and not think about uh, coming and attacking into your market. So, these uh, uh, as you see in general, we can say that competitive strategy today has to become a lot more proactive rather than react to competitive moves. So, these barriers that we were talking about can be created by economies of scale. You can set up such a large uh, facility that in future anybody who tries to come into your market, you can make them almost bankrupt, because you can ma uh, manipulate your pricing, because you have the economy of scale. So, you have the cost leadership. So, you will have a lot, lot more uh, ability to sustain for a certain period hefty discounts, which will make the new entrance life very difficult. So, these are actually all these um, uh, active reactive strategies, competitive moves and counter moves. We will discuss this again uh, at this moment, we will look at these are the various ways of creating barrier by economic scale, economy of scale, lack of product differentiation capital requirement, distribution channel, uh, the switching cost. This is not only the monetary cost, but often actually convenience itself can be a, uh, I mean take for example, in the uh, mobile phone industry, even today the service companies are resisting uh, more this uh, what we call uh, number portability, because once your number becomes independent of your uh, supplier. People do not want to change supplier, because their mobile phone number is going to change and it is hassle to inform all your contacts about your uh, new number. Now, if the number can be now made portable, which is what a telecom regulatory authority they want, uh, but the uh, and, and that will actually dissolve. Uh, a certain uh, aspects, uh, barriers to ent entry barrier today, which exists uh, because of that uh, number and familiarity uh, and so on. Switching costs, uh, the regulatory authorities or uh, customers, they want this switching cost to become lower and lower and uh, competitors, they would like to increase this switching cost as far as possible or make it as inconvenient as possible, because that is a proactive strategy to enhance loyalty. So, these are you can see some there are uh, things that are what we normally portray in a positive light, 
uh, which is that uh, you know open competition uh, as much competition as possible uh, also has a sort of a dark underbelly uh, where actually uh, comp companies have to deliberately strategize so that their back is protected their flank is protected we'll discuss that uh, in more detail at this moment important to understand that these are the uh, important uh, ways to create barriers. Yeah, I, I would just like to add probably uh, this, uh, some of the examples like we, you have talked about mobile telephony, uh, we take this uh, DTH service provider. Mm -hmm. So, today what happens is if you want to just um, wants to change your service provider from your current service provider A to current service to the next potential it's direct to home television yeah mm. so you have a set top box and then you have wiring and then you have a investment in a, yeah so all those are basically other, again a sort of a physical barriers to switching from one uh, service, service provider to the other so these are but however probably in future the technologies can make even those switching cost or barriers will come down supposedly your uh, the same set top box should be able to serve so uh, and technically we can easily see yeah. that that uh, there is uh, no no reason why that cannot yeah, happen it cannot happen another thing is probably uh, supposedly more and more people probably in metros are having this uh, uh, wi-fi inside the home so if the the your tvs are now going smart tvs and they start receiving those uh, signals so just like coming, on, on, yes. on my phone I can go from one Wi-Fi zone to the other Wi-Fi uh, zone start using or at the, in the same uh, mall there may be two, three people uh, giving Wi-Fi and I can uh, log on to any one of them. Yeah. What you are saying is that it should be possible yeah. and I think that is absolutely correct yeah. that ultimately the pressure of the market and the power of the customer is going to prevail over, uh, prevail over all the other types of uh, these kinds of uh, artificial barriers that have been created. Yeah. Today. Another probably a type of barrier which is very important because uh, this trips regulation across the world is going on. So intellectual property rights uh, regime which is going to be implemented across uh, the countries. So that is a sort of one barrier which is which is going to be there. So if you have your uh, patents or uh, other intellectual property rights that will act certainly as in a barrier for the organization to basically enter into a market or probably uh, inhibits their ability to compete in certain markets to the incumbent who has those intellectual property absolutely rights. right absolutely right as i was mentioning in the beginning of this session that the relationship with the competition earlier was very clear it was a, a relationship based on conflict and competition but uh, today Legally, uh, there are a number of different types of coexistence, cooperation uh, approaches that are encouraged by the regulators or uh, by the marketplace, by customers, so that uh, one uh, service provider's offerings or one product offerings uh, become compatible with the other. So, today, for example, as uh, Professor Mishra was pointing out, that in direct to home television, each set-top box is unique to a particular service provider. But once a new type of uh, box comes into play and technologically we can see that is a, a, you know a very marginal amount of investment will be necessary to create a box uh, which should be able to talk to any uh, right. service provider. And when that happens, then coexistence and cooperation among the content uh, provider. So, today Tata Sky, Airtel, uh, Videocon or Dish TV, all these companies, uh, they will have to sit together along with uh, HBO and Star and uh, Doordarshan and NDTV or India Today and they have to sit together and uh, realize that coexistence and cooperation uh, will have to be a, a reality of their competitive structure. So, in a way, uh, this uh, intensity uh, and the pressure from customers where they want to dissolve all the artificial uh, barriers uh, to entry will force a lot of changes in the nature of competition. So, conflict 
and uh, competition, the older style of competitive strategy formulation and deployment will have to work hand in hand the new with the new forms of uh, coexistence cooperation. So, a new terminology has come in if you search for this terminology you will find reference to interesting books and papers which is called co-opetition. That means, coexistence cooperation that part is combined with competition and it is called co-opetition. Because as I said uh, earlier and during this session that uh, in today's marketplace the same company may be your competitor in one field, may be your supplier in another field, may be your collaborator in another field. So, and therefore, uh, these mixed pictures will become an everyday reality and uh, therefore, the nature of competition is changing. The nature of competition is changing and we are seeing uh, new forms coming up. In the earlier years collusion, which is when uh, the competitors surreptitiously get together to take advantage of the customer. This uh, mo happens more in oligopolistic types of markets, which we have discussed before, where few uh, competitors dominate 80, 90 percent of the market. Then those uh, two or three companies, which dominate 80, 90 percent of the market may uh, behind the scene work together to hold the price steady in spite of uh, costs coming down or uh, may try to uh, push it upwards even when there is no cost push upwards and so on. As you can see for example, in banking uh, often uh, when RBI Reserve Bank of India they reduce the rates, then the banks uh, sort of tacitly they have understanding and they do not pass on that reduction very readily to the customer. Then there will have to be some regulatory pressure from the government from RBI, then the banks are uh, they reluctantly then agree. These things uh, uh, therefore, uh, has made it a little bit uh, 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 the situation has become a little confusing or I would say com complex that uh, what used to be earlier a zero sum game. That means, one uh, company gains uh, at the cost of the other company, the market is no longer uh, that simple. So, the, the games that are played um, and uh, incidentally we have uh, good courses also available on NPTEL on uh, game theory and how games are deployed for strategies. Uh, you can if you are interested you can study it in more detail. In our course we will perhaps discuss it in a little uh, in, in shorter form later on when we uh, go towards the conclusion part, concluding part of this uh, session, uh, this uh, module, uh, the whole marketing one. And we will perhaps also discuss it in marketing two, this aspect of games as uh, in strategies and how the zero sum uh, games are giving way to different other types of uh, payoffs and counter payoffs. So, uh, I think uh, 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 what used to be earlier very much frowned upon and called collusion, which was actually taking the customer for a ride is now giving way to collaboration and uh, cooperation among competitors under the pressure of customers and under uh, pressure of regulators and uh, competition game is changing. Uh, this is uh, where we say end this session and in the next session I will take up a particular case um, and, and show you how in reality today uh, analysis is done, competitive analysis is done and how competitive strategies are formulated uh, uh, using those analysis. Thank you. Thank you.